Thank you for tuning into the Walk in Truth Radio Network broadcast. Grab your Bible, get settled, and let's walk through the Word of God together. Let us now reason together and listen to see what God is saying to us today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be what? Glad in it. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. I'm so glad to be here today. Amen. Amen. God, it may be raining outside, but it's a lot of light inside of each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. No matter how many storms come, God got a way to just make you shine. Yeah. You are the light unto the world. No matter how dark it gets and how much rain may fall, like Karen say, sometimes you need to put up your umbrella and just walk in the rain. Amen. Because <laughs> sometimes you just need to help somebody. Yeah. That's maybe getting wet. Amen. But you know, we're going to wet them with the word of God. And the power of the Holy Spirit and the goodness and the kindness that's in our hearts. Because God has shed his love abroad for everyone. So we want to thank God for all those who are listening around the world to the Walker True Radio Network broadcast. We are Walker True Christian Fellowship Church. And we thank you for joining us today for our Sunday abbreviated worship service. We want to thank you. We want to bless you. We hope that you hear something that will encourage, inspire, and uplift you today. That will make you ask, if you're not saved, what must I do to be saved? Amen. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our own exhorter, Minister Karen. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, y'all. You can know it's storming outside and it's raining like Pastor say. We are the sun. We are the light of this world. Amen. And we're going to rejoice and praise Amen. him on today. Amen. I am so grateful to be here on today. I know one thing. When I got out there driving this morning, I seen all that water on the highway. I was driving like an 80-year-old woman with a little bit of old cop. And I said, I I'm, I'm going to keep it pushing. That's right. That's right. You know, and once I got so far, it cleared up. Amen. And I just thank God that I pressed on it and came on in this church on today. A little tired. We went to the Misfits last night and had a high praise last night. We really enjoyed ourselves. And it's a pleasure when we can come with another body of Christ and just, just get our praise on and, and just really have a good time. Amen. Amen. I would like to read to you all today from the book of Psalms. And it's coming from Psalms 100. Since we're dealing with praise. We need to praise him whenever we can. We yeah. need to praise him in the midst of any storms and situations in our lives because God is just that good. And we just praise him. He loves it when we praise him. That's what the word said. He loves a joyful praise. Yeah. He loves it when we yeah. worship him. He loves us when we just lift him up above everything else in our lives. Amen. Amen. So I'll be reading to you from the book of Psalms 100 starting at the first verse. And I'm reading from the CEV, because I love simple, because it, it just does something for me. It says, shout praises to the Lord, everyone on this earth. Be joyful and sing as you come and to worship the Lord. You know the Lord is God. He created us, and we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep in his pasture. Be thankful and praise the Lord as you enter his temple. The Lord is good. His love and faithfulness will last forever. Praise the Lord. Let the word that we read out of the Bible, let the word and everything that we read and say out of the Bible, let it touch someone, may it uplift someone, and let them know that God is good. Amen. No, no, come on, y'all. God is good. Amen. I didn't get up here to show off, but y'all know sometimes it's it's hard for me to put my trap closed, but I, it's something about when I can get up here and I can praise the Lord. As y'all know, over the prayer line Thursday, I, I, I have been going through a lot of stuff. But when Pastor Sutton got on there and he started praising and praising, you know how it say praise to lift that stuff up off you. And yeah. I'm thankful that the Lord, the Spirit in him just moved in that moment because ever since then, I feel light as a feather. Yeah, the storm is still going on, but he said, keep your eyes on me. Yeah. And he said, I'll take care of that. See, that's the thing we have to remember when the storm hits us. When we going through something and we keep our eyes focused on him, he said, 
He'll take care of the stuff that we need taken care of. Yeah. He said, I want you to worship and praise me. Mm -hmm. I want you to reach somebody on today. I want you to open your mouth and let somebody know how good I am. See, it's when we open our mouth and let somebody know how good has been to us. How good God has been to us. Yeah. See, he wants us to tell somebody. I want to tell everybody. Come on. Because he's been just that good. Oh, yeah, you're going to go through some stuff, but can't you stay for a little while? Can't you stay awoke for a little while and just yeah. watch and see what God is going to do? He said he's able to do anything but fail. He oh, said in, you, in me, you're more than a conqueror. He said when you're weak, I make you strong. So we got to remember that because God is just that good. He, woo, Lord have mercy. Y'all just don't know. Come on, okay. Y'all don't know. And all this stuff is just really hitting me. And, and yeah, I got tears of joy coming about because I'm starting to realize how good he is. Come on, yeah. And, 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 and I'm telling you, I'm, I, it's hitting me yeah, all right. how good he is. Hallelujah. How he has brought me out. How he has brought me to where I am today. A lot of people say, yeah, you got a big mouth, but guess what? I'm going to keep this big mouth. This is my gift. You figure out what your gift is and use it. I'm going to use mine to glorify the Lord, to worship him and to praise him, to encourage other people in spite of. That's all we got to do. Whatever he's giving you to use, use it. Because you'll be surprised how light the Lord gets. Because he is so good. And I'm going to leave y'all with that. All right. Amen. 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 chapter 4 and we want to talk about the fact that there's we are sons and daughters of God but there's some things we can't attain apprehend or get until we grow up so this sermon is about yes we're sons and daughters of God but we need to grow up 
Right. A lot of the things that we want to have in Christ is not lack of, 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 of his ability to have it because he says we have all spiritual gifts. Yeah, that's right. So the issue is not his ability. It is really not our ability. It's our willingness to submit to the Holy Spirit to grow up. Some things can't you, you can't get till you grow up. And with Jesus being our big brother, you know, he said he didn't come to be served. He came to serve. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thought about that. And remember the Bible says the, the older shall serve the younger. Mm -hmm. I am an older brother. Some of you are older siblings. Isn't it funny? As much as we are the head, we have to serve our younger siblings. That's right. <laughs> because the father tells us to take care of them. The father tells us, or the mother tells us, take care of your little brothers and sisters. And you know, we couldn't stand it. For those of us who did we boy, we boy, boy, boy. I had to take my, my brother and sister to the park with me. Had to, hey, hold their hand, and I'm with the fellas. And my mother and father say, take them to the park too. What you mean? They just in the way. But as I got older, I understood that the responsibility that I would have to do and get and, 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 and the relationship I have as a brother or sister, an older sibling, is to serve. And Jesus is that older brother for us. So look at let's, let's look at Galatians. Because we really want to talk about maturity. Whatever you lack in God and you were saying to God is due to your maturity. You are still a baby. And a baby can only handle baby things. But you have an older brother that wants you to grow up. He's your God. He's your Lord. His name is Jesus. So let's look at Galatians 4. 1 through 4. Just 1 through 4. Go ahead and read loud. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Amen. Born of a woman under the law. Can you read? To redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. Can you read? And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Amen. Amen. Praise God for the reading of the word. In, in, in this sermon, I'm going to take my time. And I might finish it, I might not. But, you know, sometimes we need to be taught. Because you get become mature by being taught. That's right. Not preached at. That's right. So let's look at verse 1 carefully. Paul is trying to explain to these Galatians, remember, that they were being proselyted, proselyted by the Judaizers, meaning that Paul had saved them by grace through the preaching of the Gospels, and then here comes the Judaizers, the ones who want to hinder the Gospel, stop it from growing, and say, look, you need Paul, and that's fine what he said, but you need something extra. And I realized by a conversation I had with the saints this week that some of you still think you need something extra. You haven't matured to understand that God did it all, did it all for you, and you can't do nothing for yourself. You still want to add something to it, like your works, and how good you are, and how much you love him. That None of that will get you into heaven. All that will do is lead you to how much love I need to do, how much works I need to do, what I need to do here. Those are the, 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 the speakings of children. Because it, it says in verse 1, let me paraphrase and say, look, even though the child is an heir, which means they're going to inherit something, that they are still immature. That they, even though they're heirs, they still don't understand that they have to what does it say? Uh, he is a what? He is a heir and he's the owner of all. But the one only problem is he's not ready to receive all. When we're children, we're not ready to receive all that God has for us. 
Read verse 2. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. He's under guardians and managers until what? The date set by his father. See, God has set a date for you. But until then, you're under guardians and managers. What Paul is trying to explain to them is the difference between, between maturing from law to grace. See, the law was a manager. It was a guardian. It told them what they couldn't do. It told them what they could do. And it also produced, the purpose for the law was to show us sin. It showed them that. It was a teacher. Here is sin. That's what it looks like. That's what God says it is. It's very sinful. And when you sin, there's a punishment. See, all of us grew up like that. We grew up with laws and rules and regulations and ordinances. And, 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 and they're good for their purpose. But they never could save you. They were supposed to push you into maturity. Don't you get tired of people telling you what to do? <laughs> Things that you know you should do. Isn't it funny? Somebody tell you, remind you of something that you should be doing and you get mad at them. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Well, if you know, why aren't you doing it? <laughs> you know the old saying? If I know better, I would do better. And we know that's not to be true. Some people know better and they still don't do better because they haven't matured. And God is saying, look, Paul is trying to explain to them, you were heirs to everything and the law was sent to show you how sinful you was. And Jesus fulfilled the law by dying on the cross for you. So you don't need to run back to those ordinances, those things that the Judaizers say, circumcision, washing of hands, all of that, because that's been done away with. God fulfilled all that. He was the fulfillment of the law. So he's trying to explain to them that look, you already, already own it. And I find out with saints, that's hard for us to believe. Mm -hmm. That we already have it. Yeah. We already own it. There's nothing more to get. But there's a lot to grow into. I'm going to say that again. There's nothing more to get. But there's a lot that you need to grow into. And you need to grow beyond somebody having to tell you the law. Grace is a higher requirement. Grace requires faith. Grace requires responsibility. Grace requires car. Committed, being committed, accountable, and responsible on a consistent basis. Grace puts it on you. The law was supposed to drive you to Christ because you couldn't fulfill the law. The law said, I need perfection. There is no grace in law. There's only punishment. Right. It was something that even the nation of Israel could not bear. So why would they put it on the new Gentile church? Because they hadn't matured yet. They were still saved. They were still sanctified. Some were false brothers. But when you've been practicing law so long, you don't know how to get out from under it. It's a heavy weight to bear. It burns you every day. And when we teach law and grace in church, what happens is the person gets confused. Did Jesus do it or do I need to do it? Did Jesus save me or I need to do something to earn his love and his salvation? What's the difference? The difference is that you are an heir. You are a child of God. Look at verse 3. Look at verse 3. And it, and it says, and the question says, and we were also, when we were, what? Children were what? Enslaved to the elementary things of this world. You were enslaved to the principles of this world. See, when you're a child, you are enslaved to your what your teacher teaches. So when we were children, we were enslaved to the law because the law was supposed to teach us. But now that we're free, and how do we become free? In the fullness of time, God sent his son. So there's a certain time that God sent his son to set us free because he fulfilled the law. The grace that is afforded to us is because he, the big brother, our big brother, fulfilled the law. And because he fulfilled the law, we can be redeemed. And because we've been redeemed, we can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And because we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are become children of God. When you're born again, you are adopted into the family. And being that you're adopted in the family, you have all rights and privileges of someone born by blood. But your adoption is by faith. The adoption of Abraham, of all nations who would believe. So the issue is never 
The fact that you can't get it or you need something to do it, it's your level of belief and trust in God. When we go through, that's pain. Pain has its purpose. Suffering has its purpose. It's supposed to push us into the arms of Jesus. It's supposed to push us into trusting Jesus. It's supposed to raise our maturity level so that we can have the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But a lot of us, when we push, we run to, we got what we got to do to get out of this. Trust Jesus. No, no, no. Can, 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 I, can, I, can I light a candle? Can I go to my private room? Will that lift this burden from me? And what I will tell you is, it may make you feel good for a moment, but it's not the best that you can do. What you can do is pray to the God who died for you, who loved you, who sent his son for you, and understand in that moment in time, he gave you the opportunity to grow up and be saved. You are a son. You are a daughter. You have rights and privileges in Christ Jesus that you can never have in, in the natural life. And he says it's all for you. And all you need to do is grow up in it. And that's basically the sanctification process. You being conformed to his image. Mm -hmm. So if you're being conformed to his image, you are maturing in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. You're growing up every day, in every way. You're finding a way that, that no matter what you go through, you can go to the next level of maturity in it. And it normally comes on the back of a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How are you going to handle it this time? What you going to do different this time? <laughs> Are you going to turn to people who don't know God and ask their opinion? Or are you going to turn to the saints? Or are you going to turn to what the word says about it? Or are you going to have your opinion about it that means nothing to God? <laughs> so many times in our walk, we allow ourselves to be entrapped in our own emotions and our opinions. And we say things that children say. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm grown. But the Bible so showed us in Judges, that's what they said back in Judges. Mm -hmm. Everyone does what is right in his own eyes. Right. That's the words of a fool and a child. Not understanding that we have been bought with a price. Right. We have been redeemed. And if you are heir to the throne of grace, then there's a level of maturity that we should obtain every day. You want to become better in understanding what God did for you. And the better you understand that, the more victory you can walk in. But you can't walk in victory staying a baby. Because he will always have to fight your battles. Jesus even said, I don't pray for you anymore. God loves you. He loved me. You love me, so you go directly to God. So why waste your time sometimes going all around, trying to garner people to feel the way you feel, when you go directly to God and say, God, this is where I feel. Can you get me out of this? And he said, of course I can. Did you realize I died for you? Did you realize I died for that one problem that you're going through? That one. Forget the other ones that's going to come, but let's get over this one. Mm -hmm. So God gets in the fire with you. <laughs> so when people see you, they say, yesterday you was just torn up, tore up from the floor, but today right something had happened. What happened to you? Well, see, when I was in the fire, I thought I was by myself, but you know what? I turned around and I saw Jesus in here with me. Amen. Amen. See, as a mature saint, you see Jesus with you all the time. Because you understand what the word said. He said, what? I never what? Leave you nor forsake you. So no matter what I go through as a child of God and maturing in Christ, I see and know and sometimes feel. But it's the seeing and knowing that's more important than my feeling. That's right. That God is with me. That I'm an heir. And as an heir, I have the privilege of being an heir. You're no longer a slave to the world and the things of this world and the law. You've been set free. I was talking to a dear sister this weekend, this past week, and they said something that was so shocking to me, but it's how, how things go sometimes in church. Not necessarily on purpose, but it confuses the person. One minute you say we say by grace through faith, which is not of all, but a free gift from God, right? Mm -hmm. And then you say, you need to get your walk together. <laughs> Now, hold on. Now, let me get this straight. I didn't save myself. He sanctified me. 
I am his workmanship that he's going to complete. How can I get my walk together? Because if I could have got my walk together, wouldn't I got it together a long time ago? Yeah. See, you don't need a, a savior when it's all about you doing something. Right. You just need to pull up your bootstraps and walk around. Mm. But see, that's the law. Okay. And the Bible says in Romans, the law was weak to the flesh because it could not make the flesh do right. Mm. No matter how many laws there were, they kept breaking them. <laughs> just like in America. They make a law for this, they make a law for that, and they still get broken. Why? Because the law is weak. The law can never do what God did for us, send his son in sinful flesh to die for us, to fulfill the law and the required mother law, which was the punishment of the law, and we were buried with him, and then we now are raised with him, sitting in the heavenly places. He sees you complete. He sees you full. But you have to understand that. Anything I do is by faith. So even when I need to get my walk together, I got to rely on the Holy Spirit to help me walk. That's right. Amen. Come on, See, when you give God all the glory, uh -huh. then you can mature. See, I keep saying, what God, God doing? What God doing? See, that's what we not, you need to get to. It's Jesus Christ and us, what? The hope of glory. Because of how he did, we can live. It's no longer I that live, but Christ liveth in me. You see, you keep Jesus on the throne, you growing up. But when you, I, me, my, I'm going to do, I'm going to do, we going to do. No, no, no. You're going to do as the Holy Spirit tells you to do. Either you're going to be obedient to the Holy Spirit or you're not. The issue is, again, growing up. When you're, when you're young and full of yourself, you disobedient. Mm -hmm. But when you grow up, you become obedient if you grow up. Mm -hmm. Some of you will never grow up because you don't want the responsibility of what it takes to grow up. Uh -oh. Like I always said, some of you going to go to heaven in a pumpkin seat. <laughs> go have a 10-year-old little boy carry you into heaven. You're going to make it. But what you're going to miss out is the joy of growing up in Christ. Right here, right now. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to experience. That joy. Read verse 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Born of a woman, I said that, born under the law. He was subject to the law. He fulfilled the law. We get his fulfillment. He became a propitiation for our sin. He became a substitute, the mercy seat for us. We participate in his righteousness. We have no righteousness of our own. So what he did was he fulfilled the law. And guess what? Because we believe he fulfilled the law, we get his righteousness. The big brother get the raw end of the stick. We should have got the punishment. But we get the righteousness. He took on our punishment so we can get his righteousness. He took on our punishment so we can walk in victory. He took on our punishment so that we can grow up. But we got to grow up, saints. Amen. We got to move away from the elementary things. We got to move away from form and fashion and rituals and things that, that don't mean nothing that God calls dead works. He is all of the feasts. He is the Passover, mm -hmm. the Feast of Tabernacles, and he, he is a uh, Pentecost, all rolled up in one. They were shadows, and we have the substance. And yet and still, it's a slippery slope because, again, when we get in trouble, that's my seat. People want to worry about, what do I need to do to get out of this trouble? Mm -hmm. Pray. Mm -hmm. Praise. Wait on the Lord. Read your word. Mm -hmm. Stand on the rock. Amen. Know that he is. Yeah. And he's a reward of those who what? Diligently seek him. See, when I know that, I can stand on it. I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. Because I know something, Minister K. I know. You can't convince me. Because he's been that good to me. Romans 2 and 4 says, The goodness of God should lead me to repentance. Two things about repentance. Godly sorrow and a changed mind. 
A changed mind is a mature mind. And the godly sorrow is, man, I wish I would have got this long time ago. But in the perfect time, I got it because he wanted me to have it. Everybody that's saved got saved by revelation. All right. Come on, Doc. Woo. Everybody that got saved on this side of the cross got saved by revelation. Praise the Lord. Through the word of God. Somebody had to tell you the gospel. You ain't saved yourself. Come on with it. One man planted that seed in you, a woman planted that seed in you, and it was 25, 30 years, then that seed grew. Because God knew at the perfect and the right time, just like he sent his son in the fullness of time. What he means is he couldn't have came one day before or one day after. You could have got saved one day before or one day after. The grace that was given to you, the revelation and the, and the cleansing of you by the power of the Holy Spirit, the one time act of God on a sin sick soul called salvation happened to you who are saved. And now you're being sanctified in the fullness of time to be conformed to his image. Grow up, saints. This is what we should do. We should be able to grow up. So we sent him in the time, and it says we receive adoption as sons. So let me get this straight, Pastor. He died to redeem us that we may receive adoption as sons. He redeemed we receive. Mm -hmm. Somebody can shout about that later. <laughs> right. That's right. He redeemed. Yeah. So we can receive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You couldn't receive unless you got redeemed. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. You couldn't receive unless you got redeemed. Yeah. And what did you get redeemed to? Adoption of sons and daughters of God. Right. Thank you. What did you do? Nothing. <laughs> Just like your natural birth. Mothers. Y'all yeah. know. Them children came in, in the proper time. And they didn't ask when to come. And they didn't ask who was going to be their family. They just came. Your childbearing pain is the way you redeemed your child into the world. And through the pain of the cross, God redeemed us to himself. All right. Us men don't know nothing about that. Amen. Come on, Sister Jack, say it again. Amen. amen. You must say amen. We don't know nothing about that. Amen. You step on our toe. We think we need to be redeemed. <laughs> but in all seriousness, it's the redemption that gave us the ability to receive. You couldn't receive without the redemption. And with the redemption came ascending. With the redemption came an email. With the redemption came the knock at the door. He redeemed you. You received him. And then he gave you one more thing. Not only did he give you the adoption of sons, he sent back amen, All right. the Holy Spirit the Lord. to live in your heart yeah. that you may holler out Abba Father. Yeah. So redeem, receive, and sent. He redeemed you. You received it and believed it. And then on top of that, he sent the Holy Spirit to live within you and guide you through this thing called life. Mature you in it. That's what we get. We get to call him our Father because of what he's done for us. He's trying to explain to these Galatians, you don't need to do nothing else but believe. But so many times, Again, in our churches, you, pre you preach law and grace, and what was to the Jews is good for the Gentiles, and it's not there. That's right. It may be written, it may be good for you to learn, but it wasn't written to you. You're the Gentile church. You couldn't do the rituals no way. So why? Because men like controlling other men. That's right. That's why. Where there's Christ, there's what? Liberty. Mm -hmm. And liberty means freedom. Mm -hmm. All things are lawful for us. We can do what we want to do. But what guides us is everything is not prosperous for us. 
Everything is not expedient for us. Everything is not good for us. And what guides us to what is good and what is not good is the love of God that was shed abroad in our heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't need a law to tell me that it's bad. I got the Holy Spirit telling me, you know what? That ain't going to show you love God. Mm -hmm. See, love governs you better than law. Amen. All right. Amen. The old secular sound said love should have bought you what? Home last night. See, love should bring you to Christ. <laughs> Who's the love of your soul? So why do you keep going to people who don't love your soul when the person who died for you loves you so much? He said, just come to me. I'll tell you what to do. Amen. And I'll still give you a choice to ignore me. Mm -hmm. And you won't get punished for it. You might get chastised for it, but you ain't going to die from it. Because he chastises what? Those he loves and those he don't love. He don't chastise. He calls them bastards. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, there's a chastisement there, but there's not a penalty of condemnation. Uh. See, so many times in your saintly walk with life, you go through stuff and you feel condemned. But how are you going to feel that if you know that there's no more condemnation for those of us who believe in Christ Jesus? How are you going to feel condemned? Who, who, who can condemn you? Who can lay a charge against you? You gonna let people on the outside of the church tell you that you condemn? Right. That you a hypocrite? Come on, say. Don't listen to them. Listen to what God say. You the anointed of God. You are heir to the throne. You are joint heirs. You just need to mature. And when you do go astray and somebody see it that you become a stumbling block for, that's why we always on guard on how we behave in public because they may not understand that we still are work in progress. But you don't use that statement to stay in mature. Mm -hmm. So you don't use that as your banner when somebody confronts you when you're doing something you ain't supposed to be doing. You should repent and say, you're right. But let me tell you, God loved me enough he died for me. You know what? I'm glad you told me because I need to do better. Mm -hmm. But I need to do better by trusting in God. Yeah. You see, you need to grow up in this thing. See, you grow up, you can receive more. We talk about light. What do you think light is? Light is a mature thing. Mm -hmm. Some of you still working on birthday candle light. <laughs> Come on, sir. God trying to make you a beacon of light. He trying to make you a lighthouse of light. And you still working on that little candle right there. It's still light. It's still good for you. But you've been in this too long not to be a beacon. That's why he said some of you should be teachers by now. But I got to go back and teach you the elementary things. And that question I asked y'all Tuesday, let me know. I got a lot of work to do. I can't go nowhere. <laughs> it's all about Jesus. Yeah. We need to grow up. We need to grow up. I'm almost done. Go to John. Go to John. Go to John 1 12. And I'm going to read that. When you get it saved, man, this is more evidence. This is more evidence. John 1, 12 says, but to all who did what? Receive. Here we go, receive. Receive, receive him who believed and what? In his name, he gave them the what? Right to be what? Become what? Sons and daughters of God. You have a right to become that if you believe. There's no ritual that's needed for you to become a son and daughter of God. You don't need the right hand of fellowship to become a son and daughter of God. You need to believe that he is. That he died on the cross for you. And you automatically become a son and daughter of God. And you receive because you believe. And then you get the Holy Spirit inside of you. Quit trying to usher in what you need to stir up. Come on, son. Come on. Stir up the gift. What is the gift? It's the Holy Spirit in you. Read 13. Who were born not of blood. You weren't born of blood. You weren't born of flesh. We are Abraham's seed. We born of what? Faith. Read. I'm sorry. I get excited. Go ahead. <laughs> nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. But of God. That's but God moment. You were born in the proper time by God. You weren't born by the will of the flesh, nor the blood of man. 
You were born by the spirit of God and in proper time, God raised you from death into life. Mm -hmm. You had a but God moment. And because you had your but God moment, now God wants you to grow up in Christ. Look at Matthew. Matthew 317. And behold, a voice from heaven came down and this is and said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. At the proper time, in the fullness of time, God said, and the people heard it, John the Baptist heard it, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So in other words, when you see the well pleased son, you will see the well pleased blessing. You are an heir. So in you, you he's well pleased. Because you're in Christ Jesus. Look at Luke 2 5. He can't give you more favor until you live up to the favor that he's giving you. And living up to it is not doing something, it's believing and trusting and walking by faith in the favor and the wisdom that he's giving you and giving all the glory to him. A lot of times we don't mature because we don't start off the, with our day giving God glory. You worry about your work. You worry about your head. You worry about what you're going to eat today. But you ain't worried about giving God some glory. And then you give him the old, oh, thank you, Jesus. He deserved better than that. Sometimes you need to, in the middle of your day, give yourself two minutes to take a praise break. So you can grow up in this thing. So men can see the light that's shining in you. Yes, it's still covered by this flesh. Your problems and issues, your circumstances, incidents and accidents. But that's just a, 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 a temporary thing. Because God is going to get you through. And if he's going to get you through, he's going to be in it with you. But the goal of your issues is to give God some glory and be the light unto this world. We need to grow up. You don't need to keep going back to the elementary thing. There's some things that you should just know. You forget how dirty you were. We heard a story last night that was really good. You forget how dirty you were. And I guarantee you, if you always in the back of your mind, remember how dirty you was, you can give God some praise on how clean you are today. Yeah. But when you forget, when you set it aside, you start looking pious. You start looking religious. You look like you're swimming in the elementary thing. You give the quotes and you, and you raise your hand and twinkle your fingers, but can't get a coherent thought about God out of your mouth because you haven't practiced being mature. Maturity comes with practice. Yes, it does. It's just not going to happen because you saved. You have to grow up in this thing. If Jesus had to grow up, you had to grow up. He didn't begin his ministry until he was 30. He didn't begin his ministry to his 30. Go to Romans 8.3. I'm almost done. 8.3 and 8.4. Mm -hmm. 8.3 and 8.4. Go. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. So I told you that earlier. Couldn't do it. Go ahead. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. In the fullness of time, he condemned sin in the flesh. All flesh. Past, present, and future. Go. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So the righteousness of the law was fulfilled in him in his death, burial, and resurrection. So that for us who walk by the Spirit, by faith, we walk in that fulfillment. Amen. We walk in that fulfillment, read. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. See, those who live immature set their th mind on what? Things that are immature. But those who set their mind on God live for the Spirit. You have to understand that. So I just want to point out a couple things. First of all, you need to write this down if you can. We need a mature mindset. 1 Corinthians 14.20 Brothers, 
mature mindset. Write that down. 1 Corinthians 4, 20, 4, 14, 20. Brothers and sisters, do not be children in your thinking. Mm. Period. Don't be children in your thinking. Don't be adolescent in your thinking. You're supposed to have a renewed mind. And the second one is mature in our actions. We need to do things as mature people do things. 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. When I was a child, I spoke, as a ch spoke like a child. I thought as a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became what? A man, I, I, I gave up the childish thing. See, see, this is how this works. And what, what Paul's quote is a Roman thing. In Rome, there always is a rite of passage in most societies. In the Jewish society, there's bar mitzvah. In the Roman society, in the African society, you have these rites of passages. In the Roman society, it was this. When you were a Roman child, a male child, you had toys. But there was came a time around 13, 14, that you would take them toys, take them to the Colosseum, put them down, and pick up a sword. So when I was a child, I played like a child. I thought as a child. My reasoning was like a child. And I used the things the child uses. But when I became an adult, when I became mature, I put away those childish things. The elementary things of the law are childish to you who are getting matured in grace. So we need to mature in our actions. Third, we need to mature in our theology. We need to put mature in the way we think about God. Read Ephesians 4.12. <clears throat> Ephesians 4.12 To equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ. Now he's, talk, now he's talking about the five-fold ministry. We have one purpose. To equip the saints and to do what? For the work of the ministry. To, will, to the work of the ministry to do what? For building, building up the body of Christ. So in our theology and the way we look at God, our purpose is to work, to build, and to grow up. That's maturity. Read 13. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. See, he grew up in fullness of stature in favor of men. We need to, to continue to grow so we can attain this maturity, but we all need to work together as joint heirs, as a body knitted together, and grow up together until we all, until we all grow up, we won't get there. So for those who you are resisting to grow up, there are certain things that you will not understand in God until you accept what's next. Don't hit the self-destruct button. Some of us do that. We're going with God, we're going with God, and, and the devil knows that thing that will get you to slide back. And what you do, you go with God and trust God, and that thing over that self-destruct button is right there. And before you cross over on the other side where the saints are, where the mature saints are, you be like, okay, I'm right here. I see them over there, but I don't know if I'm, I'm qualified to go over there. I don't know if I should say something. I got all the excuses of why I don't say nothing. But you know what? I'm going to hit the self-destruct button so I can go on back. So you go back to child. God wants you to cross on over. Because let me tell you what's on the other side of that, that bud is of maturity. There are saints over there that welcome you. They want to receive your gift. So your theology about God has to be right. God and the Holy Spirit are progressive. He's trying to grow you up. He's trying to move you forward until his body is fully mature. He can't come back until then. And I'll finish this later. But I want you to understand. There's a couple more points. But we will gather them later. But we have to, the next point is you have to gain an understanding. We'll talk about that in Bible study. You have to gain this understanding to mature. Let's pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your people. We are heirs to the throne. And we need to grow up in it. And there's some things that we can't get until we grow up. And by the power of the Holy Spirit and the word that's in this Bible, you said, if we believe upon you as the scripture has said, O oh Lord, 
Out of our bellies and our hearts shall flow the rivers of living water, but the water can only flow wide if we grow up in it. Lord, watch over us and keep us, and look after everyone who calls upon the name of Jesus. Lord, bless the churches in this world that teach the Bible and teach grace and move away from the elementary things of the law. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We want to thank all those who are, who are listening around the world. And we want you to be encouraged, blessed, and at peace. And always remember what? Walk in truth. Thank you for listening. We worship at the Universal Church of Jesus Christ Building, located at 2301 Wallace Avenue, Overland, Missouri 63114. Times of worship, 8.30 on Sunday, Bible study 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Tuesday. All are welcome and thank you for considering us as your place of worship.